Okay, so <laughs> I did a video about my immediate reaction to the Baltimore Ravens losing to the Tennessee Titans. Uh, I wanted to do a bit of a follow-up, man, now that I had some time to kind of sit with what happened last night. And I'm going to be doing a video on Kansas City and Houston. I got to go finish watching that I'm, right now. Making me something to eat. Taking a little break. But uh, the Baltimore Ravens, surprisingly, <laughs> to some people, lost last night. Mike Vrabel did an outstanding job with neutralizing that explosive offense. But the one positive I got to say for uh, Baltimore... Marquis, Marcus Hollywood Brown is a stud. It's a receiver that they could possibly, possibly have a, uh, not a franchise player, but have, you know, have a receiver that can, for the next 10 to maybe 12 years, be one of those, I guess, Antonio, I think he has all the ability that uh, Antonio Brown has. I think that uh, he could possibly surpass Antonio Brown as far as talent goes. I don't know. It's still too early to tell. But right now, this kid is a fucking stud. And they have a stud receiver right now. But, um, you know, we're I'm, I'm going to watch a little bit of the highlights. There was one play in particular that I wanted to see again. Okay. Uh, but as we sit here and watch uh, Derrick Henry's swagged out appearance, we're going to uh, get to it. Let's go. It. it was like he knew what was going to happen. Swagged out in all white. There's Lamar Jackson getting hyped up. All right, first quarter, Ryan Tannehill lost it to the end zone, end zone and Jonu Smith bobbles the catch, but mm. catches it. Look at the play. One foot in a cheek means you're in touchdown. And what they, a play. And they set that up with a will and uh, uh, out and up with the uh, kind of in the, the halfback H position. So they did a great uh, play design. So second quarter now, Ryan Tannehill plays action airs it out to Khalif Raymond who pulls it in while falling down for that 45 yard touchdown that would be where most of Tannehill's passing yards yeah, came yeah. from right there and that in that moment action, right out the turnover too yeah. put exactly him, put him in a short split the third quarter now again. Ravens fourth and one and that doesn't go You're so supposed well. to cut it back on a quarterback sneak Michael oh no, yeah You're not supposed not to sometimes you got to protect the young fella from himself yep stop by Harold Landry who are we protecting Lamar Jackson from himself now now when you have a dominant football player like we've had in Lamar Jackson this year why do we need to protect him from himself he's great he can do it all he's fucking phenomenal right why do we need to protect him from himself that does not sound like the best player in the NFL talk right there I mean I don't know how many times we've heard people say we need to protect Christian McCaffrey from himself we need to protect Russell Wilson from himself we need to protect this player, this player, this player from himself. Great players, normally, you don't have to protect them from themselves. They already understand, listen, this is the situation. This is what I need to do. All right? You don't need to protect them from himself. If this kid was running wild all over the defenses of the NFL this year, allow him to do that, in which they tried. But what Tennessee did was they forced him into an uncomfortable area of his game that he had to rely on, and he couldn't answer the fucking bell. There for no game. <laughs> Next Titans possession here. Third and one, and Derrick oh, Henry. Yeah. Oh, my. Yep. Derrick Henry is a fucking monster. Now, I've always thought Derrick Henry was a great back. I just thought that they kept splitting his carries too. Like, they just kept throwing different running backs in there trying to split the carries. Instead of just letting this guy be the feature back. But every time you would let him be the feature back over the last two or three years, this guy was a fucking beast over the last two or three years, not just this year. People have a habit of when a player has a great stretch one year, they act like this is the first time we've ever seen it. Like, he's had stretches. We got to allow him to do that. This is ball game. You know it's ball game, right? Yeah. The engine was just going. Yeah. Right there. I mean, they're fourteen six going in. Next thing you know, you're blinking 21, 28 six. It was unbelievable how fast. And he's not that much faster than those defensive backs. They no. just like uh, no. Three plays later, third and goal. Marcus Mariota <laughs> in the game and motions out. Derrick Henry Ooh, there. Rock, jump Great ball to Corey Davis. Great play calling right there. So yeah. the Titans. I, I, that was awesome. I mean, the Titans then My they take problem. the twenty one to six lead. Next Ravens possession, Lamar Jackson 
tries to avoid the rush there, gets hit by Jarrell Casey, fumble recovered by Jeffrey Simmons, and Titans go on to win 28-12. to That was a stunner there in world. Baltimore, beating the one seed there with the Ravens, and then after the game, Derrick Henry here leaving the stadium with the crown. With a crown. With a crown on <laughs> Listen, I love it. He has been balling out. First player. I'm sorry. I was a little distracted. I missed the play. Uh, I'm going to try to go back a little bit, see if I can find it. It won't take long. Sorry. Uh, you know what's balling him, right? Khalif Raymond go pulls it in. The in the short split. Third Get quarter now. Ravens fourth and one. No game. <laughs> Next Titans possession here. Nice Third nice. and one. And Derek. Well, there was a play where uh, Earl Thomas, one of the league's best safeties, uh, tried to tackle him or try to drag him down to the ground, and Derrick Henry wasn't trying to hear that shit. So what he did was he pushed him, turned him around, and pushed him in his back. He kind of made Earl Thomas look like a little ass kid right there, trying to tackle like an older brother. <laughs> but uh, that was the play I wanted to see, but I kind of missed it because I was distracted. But uh, all right, let's get to this. You're gonna see why. Keeping all this praise on Lamar Jackson the way people have done this year is a bad thing. Because then we become, we, we delve into that realm of delusion. Where we're not really living in fucking reality. Where we're just overwhelmed by the way we feel about a certain person. That we don't really take in account different aspects of a situation. And... You'll see it a lot of times with these sports media uh, people. When they love somebody, they are willing to forgive everything that is wrong with whatever a player has deficient, you know, has a deficiency in. They're willing to ignore it, forgive it, pretend that it doesn't exist. And when they hate somebody, they want to highlight every negative aspect of a person's personality. Case in point. Let's look at uh, Skip Bayless. When Kawhi Leonard was the small forward in San Antonio and still playing, Kawhi Leonard was, in his mind, you know, he, he was a top five player. He was arguably the best player in the NBA because he could play on both sides, of the, both ends of the floor, right? So then when Kawhi Leonard wanted to get out of San Antonio, and then he started highlighting every negative aspect of his personality, every, every negative aspect of his game. And he even refused to call him by his actual name. <laughs> like, you see what I'm saying? So, this is how I think it is with Lamar Jackson right now. But really, everybody is, is in that realm of we love this guy because we feel sorry for him. It's like sympathy. You know, we feel sorry for you. So, we're going to love you unconditionally. Right? And that's not a good thing, especially when. This young kid is starting to feel himself, and then you heap all this praise on the offensive coordinator, you know, and, well, you're going to see. You're going to see. They were, they were, like, a week ago, they were talking about, or the past week, they were talking about Greg Roman possibly becoming a head coach because of what it is he does great. Now, now let's, you know, hear one of these guys up here going the opposite direction now. All right, let's go. By Darrell Casey, fumble recovered by Jeffrey Simmons, and Titans go on to win 28-12. to That was a stunner there in world. Baltimore, beating the one seed there with the Ravens. And then after the game, Derrick Henry here leaving the stadium oh, with a crown. With a crown. <laughs> with a crown. Listen, I love it. He has been balling out. First player all time with three straight 180 yard rushing games. Oh, wow. I mean, these, we talk about Derrick Henry heating up the second half of the season, yeah. but this is a totally different level. And I don't even know where we should start with this game because there's well, so many places. Let, let, let me start and say, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tennessee. Uh, I'm sorry, Derrick Henry. I, I, I didn't think they stood a chance. Did not, and I think the rest of America probably felt the same well, way, you too. Know what, well, you know what, D? Uh, not, not the rest of America. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to say I didn't think they stood a chance. I'm going to say this. I was extremely interested to see what Mike Vrabel could put together to, to beat the Baltimore offense because that was the only chance that Tennessee had. They had to stop that offense. It doesn't matter how many points they attempted to put up. If they couldn't stop that offense... Because Baltimore this year showed a knack for really running up the score up to the 40s. So 
I thought if Baltimore, was, I mean, if Tennessee was going to beat Baltimore, they would need to stop that offense, and they did a great job of doing it. A little, so he's a little yeah, yeah. 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 But let me tell you one, one, one more thing. Like you said to me, at some point, it's going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to mm -hmm. be a physical altercation like M. Rob always says. And it's going to be your willpower versus mine. And we saw Derrick Henry time and time again impose his will on any person that was trying to tackle him. Let, let and it was you. evident, man, that he is the real deal. Pay the man. They pay him. They didn't, they, pay him. They didn't want to tackle him. Look, and, and I really thought the Baltimore Ravens got out of their identity offensively. You look at these runs right here. This is the identity of the Tennessee Titans. And, um... Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I, I don't think that... The, I don't think Baltimore got out of their identity. What I think they did was they tried to go out there. They tried to do what got them there. But Tennessee did a great job with keeping Lamar Jackson in, in the pocket. They did a great job with hitting him whenever they possibly could. They did a great job with forcing that ball out of his hands because when you watch Lamar Jackson run, he does not secure the ball. The ball is not securely in his arms when he's running, but he's so fast, it's hard for anybody to catch him. But if you can get a hand on that ball while he's running, you don't even need to hit him. Just knock the shit out because he's not holding on to it. He's just like carrying it. And that's the same way Vic used to run. The first play of the Baltimore Ravens, they threw the, they threw a pass. They yeah. tried to do an explosive play. The, the, you know, Derrick Henry got the ball seven of the first ten plays for the Tennessee Titans. They let you know from the very first snap, you're going to have to deal with this all guy day. all day long. <laughs> all day. And, and, and I'm not sure if we need to tighten up rules of when uh, coaches are allowed to interview for head coaching jobs, but I thought Greg Roman got outside of himself and, and played. There we go. There we go. And I'm going to tell you exactly why Michael Robinson is throwing this all off on Greg Roman. Because he does not want Lamar Jackson to be looked at as what he really is. He's a limited quarterback with an unbelievable gift at doing one thing. Of course he could pass. He's a quarterback. He wouldn't be a quarterback if he couldn't pass. But he has an unbelievable knack with running the ball. But that's all he can do. That is the only way he can kill you. If you take away his weapons in a passing game and force him to throw tight window throws and 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 be really decisive with his throws and, and really leading receivers, you're not going to get that out of him. Like I said before, when you watch Lamar Jackson play, when he throws his passes and completes them, his receivers are pretty much wide open. His tight ends are pretty much wide open. Marquise Brown is pretty much running past wherever it's covering him. Like, he's got wide open receivers. That's who he's getting the ball to. That doesn't mean that he's great at reading the defense. That means he's just good at knowing, hey, that guy's open. Let me throw it to him. Like, he's good at that. You should be. If you want to be great in this league, you should be good at finding the open guy. It's not something that is like a is a prerequisite. Is a prerequisite. It's not something that very few quarterbacks have. Like if you can't find an open guy, like you should just give up on trying to be a quarterback. And I felt like they were heaping all this praise on this guy. Like what he was doing was so transcendent and so fucking beyond what anything we've ever seen. That that I mean, it kind of misled this kid in believing that he's greater than he actually is. So, yeah, and that's why right now Michael Robinson is blaming Greg Roman because he doesn't want Lamar Jackson to have to take a brunt of this fucking, uh, the brunt of the criticism. You call it? I didn't think it was a great, uh, uh, um, I didn't think it was the best call um, game. I thought he needed to do some things to protect Lamar Jackson from himself. Uh, they were he is the best quarterback in the NFL. He's going to be the MVP. He's going to be the MVP. Why do you need to protect him from himself? Lamar Jackson is the best quarterback in the league. Wasn't that the narrative a week ago? A couple of days ago? Wasn't that the narrative? He was the most explosive player in the NFL. Why do you need to protect him from himself? 
times when they did the read option where Lamar should have given it and he kept it because he's trying to do a lot. He's the MVP. I mean, there's a lot on this kid's plate. And I did think that there were some things offensively that you could have done to protect the kid from himself. Those fourth and ones, you were yeah. getting, especially the second one, mm -hmm. you were getting beat all day between the guards. All day. Why? I wouldn't do a quarterback sneak there. No. No. Do a read option. Allow your quarterback to be in space and give him a chance to make the play. I just thought that uh, he was calling a fantasy football game. He didn't call a real, real football game. Steve, what did you think? I agree with it. I agree with Mike Robb and how in your assessment is really uh, spot on and you hit it in a bullseye. However, that's what we've been seeing from this team all year. They have There we go. Even though I believe Steve Smith kind of contradicted himself a little bit. But uh This is what makes me not agree with uh Michael Robinson's perspective. Because they have been doing this all year. He has been calling the same. They've done what got them there. Is Tennessee prepared unbelievably well for it? And they shut it down. Just because it didn't work doesn't mean that Greg Roman got away from what they did well this year. That just means that Tennessee was prepared for it and they stopped it. That's all. That's all it means. That doesn't mean Greg Roman got outside of himself. That just means that he found a coach that was able to neutralize it. They have lived and died. The success of this team has all been predicated on the on the run. And as I keep, I, I was saying, as a former wide receiver, Mark Ingram had six uh, rushing attempts. He had a total of thirty-one yards. 31 yards. Yeah, you're going to win by doing that. It's great when it looks good. And it, it, here's what has happened. I'll summarize it in this way. A f it's a fire drill. And doing a fire drill, when you're practicing it, we all have what we're supposed to do. However, that fire drill was going on in the game, and now you have people... The scenario and the, the simulation of the fire drill was different because the fire was not contained. Their building was on multiple levels. The, the fire was on multiple levels, and guess what? They didn't have enough answers. The plan that they thought they had only worked in the air conditioned room, <laughs> on the field, under the lights. It, it, it's different. What I, what, I believe, <laughs> what I believe Steve Smith is trying to say in his very, very very Steve Smithish way is you need contingencies. When you're in a different situation, when you're in a different environment, if your style of play isn't working for you in that in that moment, you have to have backup plans. You have to have a backup to the backup plans. You have to have a backup to the backup. Okay? You have to have so many exit strategies that there is no way, and this is what New England does great, and this is why New England has been great for as long as they have been. Because they don't use the same game plan every single game. They have different game plans for different teams based on the situation. And you, it's, it's like what I say, you have to be a fucking chameleon. You have to be a chameleon. You have to be able to, to, to blend in to the background to protect yourself. Otherwise, you get caught out how Baltimore got caught out. Doing what it is you've been doing all year, and you finally ran up against a roadblock that was able to shut it down. It's hard to apply what's on paper. Hey, and Steve, I, I get what you're saying, and and, and there, there is some truth to that, that they got into a game that you know, they had to throw it a little bit more, you know, and, and maybe they weren't equipped to kind of deal they, with that type you know, of they were, Maybe it's yeah, not, but, but, they were not equipped. But check this out. We just saw Derrick Henry break it for 66 yards. That was late in the third quarter. That was in the Absolutely. third quarter. Yeah. The game really didn't get out. Real quick, let's go back and hear what Steve Smith just said. And, and this is why, and it's, it's an example of what I've been saying. Let's go back. To kind of deal with that type no, of they were maybe it's yeah. not but, but they were not equipped. But check this out. We right just there. they were not equipped. They were not equipped. Maybe they're they weren't as good as we believe they were. As as people believe they were, how good they were, 
how good Lamar Jackson was. Maybe they're not that. Did anybody ever try to, I guess, did anybody ever consider that maybe the Baltimore Ravens aren't as good as people say they are? And this is why I do, I'm doing so many videos on Baltimore is because everywhere I go, everybody I listen to, they're praising this team like they're doing something that's that's going <coughs> to, they're doing something that's going to last for like the next 10 years. They're doing something that's going to last for the next 15 years. God forbid Lamar Jackson doesn't get a crucial injury due to his running, due to his running ability. I don't see this lasting. I don't see this lasting. Like, if he doesn't get hurt, I don't see this lasting as close as to, like, seven, let alone 10 to 15. <coughs> All right? I don't think this is something that's sustainable. I've been saying this for a while. This is why I say Russell Wilson is the best mobile quarterback we've ever fucking seen. Well, I'm going to say that. I'm going to go out on the limb and I'm going to say Russell Wilson is the best mobile quarterback we've ever seen. Because he is able to protect himself with his passing ability, which is truly unbelievable. All the praise we give Lamar Jackson, that praise needs to go to Russell Wilson. His ability to read a defense, his ability to fit a ball into a tight area. He has a knack for bringing the best out of his receivers. He has a knack for it. We talk about Brady's knack. Russell Wilson has that same ability. But we don't talk about Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson doesn't get considered for MVP awards. I mean, he's a Super Bowl champion. If it wasn't for that horrible play call in the second Super Bowl against New England, he could be a two-time Super Bowl champion. Who knows? But we don't talk about him. We don't consider him for things. Because people, when they look at Russell Wilson, they, they see something that they really can't get behind. I don't know. For some reason, man, people feel like they can't get behind him as being the best quarterback in the NFL. It's not something that they can fucking uh, imagine. And it's not something that they can actually support. And, and I think it's completely messed up. So if anybody deserves any kind of sympathy, even though I don't think Russell Wilson wants anybody's sympathy, he's just going to go out there and beat you. Like, real shit, just like I think he's going to beat the Packers today, even if they don't win, if they do have a chance to win, it's because of him. So, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. I may come back to this video and do some more. I mean, I got through more than half of it, but if I do find something else in this video that I like or I want to do a video on, I may do another video. I don't know. I just, I like doing these videos so much. I'm not going to say that I like being right, but it feels good when I am. So, you know, everybody enjoy the rest of your weekend. Okay.